guys, welcome back. William Belk and David Shablak here on behalf of the Society for Simulation and Healthcare. We are joined by Kelly Cadlick, who is the outgoing chair of the Education Committee. Kelly, why don't you uh, introduce yourself, tell us kind of what you've done with the Society and maybe a little bit of your background in simulation. And how you got here. And how, and how I got here. Uh, oh man, so yeah, getting here has been a, uh, it's been a bit of a journey. So I'm a pediatric ICU doc. Nice. By training. Uh, I started off in emergency medicine. Good. Um, but then I realized adults were terrible people <laughs> to take care of. So I did two years and then switched to pediatrics, then did ICU fellowship. Nice. Um, got interested in education, doing a lot of stuff with the American Heart and resuscitation yep. courses, that kind of thing. Um, and then after fellowship, went back to Omaha and uh, Basically, the simulation, so I want to purchase a couple of mannequins, and they were laying around collecting dust. Yep, as um, happens. And no one was using them, so started using them, and that was probably in 2000, 2009 or so. Nice. And so uh, over time, just started doing simulations, became the medical director. We do, you know... All in, at our institution, we're all in situ sims, and uh, you know, so yeah, so I started doing that. Uh, then got involved with the society. First, you know, come to a couple of these meetings, and overwhelmed, and uh, you know, getting assaulted by the vendors. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> I keep a little bit of a distance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and uh, but then just got involved with some affinity groups and nice. started uh, got involved got involved started reviewing journal you know like people that would do submissions for this and then next thing you know you're a committee next thing you know you're a chair and then they keep asking you if you want to do another two years and I did it once and they asked me again and I said no I'm good <laughs> um, so no it's 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 time it's been a it's been a wonderful process uh, we've done a lot of good work uh, but it's time for no some new blood so good. tell us a little bit about the education committee what what is its purpose and what is it you guys have been working on for the last it sounds like four years right four years and so I inherited it right after actually it was in San Diego and then COVID hit yep. uh, so that was pretty awesome so we got um, immersed in the virtual environment very quickly. And yep. so with the Education Committee, uh, probably about 12 members or so from various backgrounds, but strong interest in education, whether it's you know, on the physician side, whether it's on the nursing side, but um, you know, a lot of, most people with simulation are heavily involved in education. Uh, and so we pick and choose on you know, uh, some of your elite educators, if you will, and yeah. just have, a, just have a, a passion for it. So, um, so over the past, you know, few years, we've been involved on, you know, what kind of people or, you know, what kind of topics when people come to IMSH, you know, what do they want to learn about? Um, you know, for example, virtual reality uh, was one of those things that, you know, five, eight years ago, some people did, but now more people want to know about VR uh, and AR. Um, and so we're involved in some of that, some of the planning, uh, but our biggest thing that over the past few years of trying to get together was the fundamentals and simulation. Okay. Um, and this really is, we have so many new people that come into IMSH um, every year and you come into this environment and you're overwhelmed and you're just like, man, I'm just a newbie. Yeah. Um, where do I even start? You look at the course schedule, and there's you know literally hundreds of things they can do. So, and you want to do them all. And they want to do it's them all. And so exciting. Yeah. And so you have like three of them you want to do, and that there are of course you know you have several that you want to do in their exact same time. So what we uh, decided, you know, and there was kind of a lot of back and forth. How should we do it? And how long should it be? And then you know, a year passes, then another year passes, and we still get, didn't, um, you know, get it done. And so yep. this was, you know, going out this last year, um, I just, I wanted just to get it done. I really yep. didn't, uh, you know, it's, let's just do it. And so we have uh, two fundamentals uh, in simulation. One of is more for like the educators, more is for the operations kind of specialists. And, so, and what do those look like? Well, I can tell you. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for so for each of them, um, I, I'll 
I'm going to have to read out the courses to you, but each of them is going to be about a 45 minutes uh, session. Okay. It's an extremely, I guess, high level overview. 30. I mean, just very the fundamentals. Okay. And you know, I remember one of the, you know, one of the things I have to remember when I first was a newbie coming in here is you have all these experts yep. talking on things that are you know, over my head or they're looking at, you know, this publication, that publication. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, just what do I need to know? I want yep. it to be practical and I want it to make sense to me as someone who's a novice. Yeah. Um, I don't need any all that other fluff. And so that's kind of what we done. So and it's hard to do that sometimes because so somebody in my, my day job talks about it's called academic amnesia. It's hard to remember back then because we've progressed. So you've got to really break it down to a level that when you're first starting, what are the important things? Where's that starting point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You want to just, yeah, and it's, some, it's, it can be hard to do. Try to put yourself back in that position, especially when you're older yeah. and the distance gets farther and farther and farther. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but things, I also teach a lot of, you know, just basic CPR courses. Yep. And so I'm used to uh, learners who, you know, everything that seems very natural, intuitive to me is really something that they're just getting the first exposure to. Love that. Um, and so that's what we're hoping to do. And we'll see what the reception is. And, you know, the goal from, you know, having this is to hopefully, hopefully, you know, like I'm doing a debriefing session. Nice. And our hope is is that we will do like the overview, get people interested in it. If they want a deeper dive into a particular area, like if they want to know about a specific model for debriefing or more behind the educational theory or, you know, challenging situations or individuals in the debrief, we can then uh, our plan is to hopefully develop some more modules for a deeper dive for uh, people that are interested and so to help them kind of grow along. But this is that starting point, like you said, that fundamentals go from there. It is. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's only 45 minutes. And I'm like, that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's a start. It's a start. Don't yeah. shove it down their throat. Let them, let them take in a little bit in, a, in an amount they can actually process oh, and use. Yeah, and so in 45 minutes, you know, you go to adult learners. I mean, people, number one, it's going to be later in the afternoon. People are going to be like, already, they got fed. <laughs> um, 45 minutes is fine. Yes. Because really after about 20 or 30 minutes, people are going to start, you know, hopefully I'll have them a little more engaged. But uh, people's attention spans are not, uh, they're not tremendous. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. So what advice do you have if someone wants to get involved in the education committee or kind of just coming into society looking for some way to get involved in that? Uh, so my advice would be, um, you know, it's, uh, and I'm speaking as an introvert uh, yep. at heart. And so when you can come to these huge conventions, it can be very overwhelming. You're like, oh, who do I talk to? You know, can I sit at your table? That kind of thing. Uh, my advice is just kind of, number one, be yourself. Just kind of, you know, go around. You'll eventually run into some of your people. Uh, there's plenty of things like affinity of groups to get started with and, um, from the affinity groups, then you can get involved in some, you know, uh, you know, some special interest groups, and then you'll meet so and so as a similar interest, and then um, you just kind of work your way, way up. So, so basically, just start getting involved and start, start getting involved, yeah. and just at the level that you want to, and that's acceptable. Like you said, we're all, you know, some people are extroverts, some people are introverts. Find what works for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, and just and. You know, but it never amazes me because uh, everything that you take on, there, it, it's always more work than what it's sold as yep. or told. And like, oh, no, 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 it's not that much work. And it's usually it's usually a lot more work. So take it in, bulk, in uh, bite, bite sized pieces yep. and make sure you have the bandwidth to do it. And uh, and, you know, do it for the right reasons, not just so you can throw it on your CV. Um, but, you know, because you have an interest, be involved and just kind of loafing around and, uh, you know, that's, that's not cool. That's also how we make all of us better. So, yeah, that's it. Take the responsibility seriously. If you're going to volunteer, jump in, be, yeah. be involved, right? Yeah. And, you know, and like on our committee, we're very mindful, all of us. I mean, we, this is not, it's all volunteer time. And so there are times where I'm out of commission because I'm either, have, you know, busy with my day job 
Yep. And so we go through these kind of cycles where one person is just too busy, can't contribute a lot, but then they'll have some daylight and then they're able to help out more when someone else doesn't have bandwidth. And so um, it works out. Um, I was going to tell you, do you want to, let me read off what we're offering. Okay. Um, so, so for the educators, we are doing, I think, seven of them. So curriculum design, pre-briefing, debriefing, learner assessment, scenario design, professional development, and program evaluation. And each nice. of these are 45 minute sessions? Each of these are 45 minutes. And, and these are gonna be offered at like IMSH, or are these yeah. online, uh, or? So we're offering them all today and tomorrow. Okay. And so we purposely try to not have them at the same times. So people that are new and they say they wanna like go to all of them, they, I think, should have the chance to be able to do that. And, but they're just IMSH classes? For right now, yes. Ah, and, and, that's what I wanted. And at some point, you know, you know, will we offer more in the future? Will we do this as a standing thing for every IMSH? Uh, don't know. Are we going to do like, you know, uh, like what we talked about, more advanced modules you can go through the, you know, do it online? Probably. That's nice. the goal. So if and, you're a novice coming to IMSH, these are really the core classes that you should take. Yeah, you should take um, or and you know and again I think I think we're going to offer it virtually. So in the future, if you want to look at them ahead of time and those kind of things and do it on your own time, then we should be able to do that too. That's good. Um, and we also have the like our simulation, the operational side of it. They have uh, medical terminology, procedures, uh, scenario setups, AV basics, not my thing. Uh, networking basics, also not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Policy and procedures, uh, moulage, and then uh, introduction to mannequin basics. Nice. So, so a wide variety, kind of depending on what your particular interest is. And uh, but yeah, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll have a good showing, good amount of interest, and we'll see what uh, the future holds. And it's and good because we all come from different areas. We have our strengths and we have weaknesses in some areas. And this job is so varying in the knowledge that we're required to have. So this kind of gets somebody on the same level. So that's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So is the idea just kind of see how the response goes from this year and then figure out how that it shapes is. the future? It is. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm not sure how many are, uh, how many people it's open up to. I think probably 30 to 40 for each session. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. But it'll be really guided by what you know, again, the responses, what people want in the future and how well it's received. And we just want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of uh, the people that are here. And, you know, I kind of got a soft spot for the novices. You know, again, this comes from being uh, at a fairly, you know, smaller, in, you know, simulation center, also being introverted. And, uh, and uh, yeah, these, th these kind of things could be, uh, you know, for someone coming here from a small program that's also an introvert, this can be a tough place to, uh, know how to get your uh, get your get your you know get your foot in the door. Four thousand people here, bright colors, flashing lights, all yeah. kinds of stuff going on, man. It's easy to get your cup full. So I get that too, where you know you, you go in here for a little while and you gotta tag out a yeah. bit. So yeah. Well Kelly, thank you very much for joining us and, and kind of filming this, explaining it to us as much as everybody else. Yep. I really appreciate that. All right. Cool. All right, so from the show floor of IMSH 2024 in beautiful San Diego, California, my name's David Shablock. William Belk, Kelly Cadlick, and uh, keep listening. Thank you. <laughs>